Hi everyone, let's get started with this month's teen craft. We need air dry clay, clay tools, could even be a toothpick or your fingers, a bowl with water, a placemat or wax paper to protect your surface, and paints and brushes. We're gonna start by making our little frog. So I wanna wet my clay and rehydrate it really well. And I'm going to start to form a ball, kind of about the size of a gumball, definitely larger than a marble. And using the clay and rolling it between my hands, I'm just going to make a nice circle and I can kind of flatten it out a little bit. Then I'm gonna use two smaller, maybe like half pea sized pieces and that's gonna be little eyes. You can see me using the clay tool here to smooth out the join between the two pieces of clay. Having your clay wet really helps. You can use a toothpick, you can use the sides of your paintbrushes, or you can get clay tools. They're relatively inexpensive. You can find them in stores or online. So I've got these two that are gonna be the frog's eyes, and I'm just smoothing it out over and over again. You can see it's gonna get messy, which is fun. And they're sort of offset. They're not really right on the top of his head. They almost look like ears. The next thing we're going to do are the little hands, the little frog arms. So you'll see once I'm done smoothing this out, I'm gonna grab two even smaller pieces. Again, use my water to smooth it out. These are maybe about two thirds of the size of the eye pieces. And again, you can kind of round it out. You can smooth it out with the water. I didn't make these entirely round. They're almost a little more oval, but not entirely. This is your frog. It is up to you what shape your frog is. And this I'm sort of pressing down a little bit more than the eyes. We can lose some of that roundness and shape because their arms and they are coming out of the little froggy torso, so it's okay. Again, smoothing it out with a combination of water and my clay tool. Next come the froggy feet. These are the biggest out of all of the little circles we're adding to the body. And these are more of an oval, kind of like a tic-tac shape. Okay, so you're gonna put those onto the very, very bottom. And you can see now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just going to use the water to continue to smooth it out and join these pieces together. Again, with the clay tool, just to help join the clay together. I'm kind of mushing it back and forth, and then with my fingers in the water, really smoothing out the spot where the pieces of clay join so that it's a nice, secure structure when it dries. My goal here now is to smooth out my froggy friend using the water to get rid of any fingerprints, any weird seams, and just make sure we are good to let this guy sit off to the side and dry. Next, we will do our little mushroom toadstool. So I'm gonna start with a piece of clay that I can roll out into a log. I'm not making it perfectly cylindrical because little toadstools and mushrooms, if you look at their stems, they're all kind of different shapes, just as long as you get the cylindrical part down. So I'm also going to use my fingers to smooth out the surface of the top and bottom. The top and bottom, I'm making a little bit flared kind of similar to how you might see mushrooms. I don't know, they're all different, but you can see I'm flaring them out a little bit. And then I'm gonna check it for height. I want my froggy friend to sit underneath it. So then I decide to make it a little bit taller. And then I'm gonna make sure that the top piece is nice and smooth. And that way the top of the toadstool, the cap can sit on it. The cap is kind of like a flying saucer shape and I'm using the water to help smooth that out. I'm sorry for the poor camera angle, but my camera kept dropping, so I left it here like this, and you can kind of see what I'm doing, but I'm just smoothing it out. I'm making it thinner on the edges, so it does sort of turn down like a mushroom cap, and I will eventually, you'll see, add a little bit of clay into the center, because I do want it to be a little more bulbous in the center, and then I will work with the water and my clay tools to smooth that out. I am keeping my edges nice and smooth. You can make them frayed however you'd like to. In nature, mushrooms aren't always perfectly smooth, especially once you harvest them and they get kind of funny. But you make your mushroom the exact way that you want to. Okay, so it's time for the toadstool to sit with the frog and set aside to dry. 
we're going to do the dish, trinket dish part. So I'm rehydrating my clay really well with water and kneading it to make sure the water is incorporated. I don't want this to turn to sludge, but I want it to be workable. You can see I tried to use a roller, it did not work out. So I'm just pressing down with my palms. I'm using the water to smooth out the surface and I am making sure to pick it up and flip it a little bit. I don't want it to stick to my surface, which could cause cracks, which makes the structure of your dish very weak. I'm using the water on my fingers to smooth it out and get into kind of the shape that I want. Then I'm using my cutter tool, you can use a plastic butter knife, to scrape off my edges. And then again, work with the water on my fingers to get into a nice shape. Then I'm making a nice long snake with the excess clay and that's going to be the lip around the edge of our trinket dish. So you can make this whatever shape you want. It could be more oblong, it could be circular, it could be a lily pad shape. But regardless, we're using the little lip on our dish. So you'll see I take the snake and it's not even perfect, but I will make it the way that I want it to. And I put it on there, I press it down. And then I will use the water and my fingers to join the seams the same way that we did with the appendages on our frog. So I am smoothing it out using my fingers. And then what I will do eventually is take my cutter tool or again your plastic butter knife and I will cut, go around the edges so that see here the top is nice and flat. You can cut, you can smooth with your flat edge or you don't need it to be a flat edge. You can have it be tapered and natural and whatever you like. I liked the look of the flat edge, so that was what I did. And I just used that edge to help smooth everything out, make it a little bit more uniform. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is what I wanted mine to look like. Once you are happy with the shape of your little trinket dish, you can put it aside to dry, leave it on your parchment. I did about 36 hours. I made sure to flip it over halfway through because the underneath needed to dry too. Next, we are going to paint it. So I have my white, green, and red paint, and I'm going to make a light green by mixing my white and green, and I'm going to paint my little dish. You may find that the wetness of your paint rehydrates your clay a little bit. That's okay, just have patience. You can add certainly more layers. You'll see as I go later on, I have to touch it up a lot because wherever I'm touching, the paint sort of pulls away from the clay as the clay rehydrates. It's not too bad once your clay is really dry, but you'll see. Also, paint does dry darker, so if you're not satisfied with the color, let it dry and then try again. I'm using the regular green for the outside and the lip of my little trinket dish, and I'm going to, again, just work in layers. You will see my fingers, like I said, do start to pull some of the paint away, so it's okay. We go back and we touch it up as it dries. I'm making sure to really get underneath there as well and cover up any little white spots. You can also flip it over when it is totally dry and paint the underneath. I don't think I painted underneath mine. Now, while the green paint is still kind of wet, I'm going back into the lighter green color and I am blending the edge between the dark green and the light green so it's less harsh and it looks a little less sloppy. You'll see I dip my brush back and forth between the light green and the dark green just to get a little blend and make that line less harsh. You can also see some of the white spots where the paint didn't take or my fingers pulled the paint off. And as I said, I will go through every now and then as it dries and touch up some of those spots. Next, I'm going to paint my froggy friend and I'm going to use the regular darker green to cover up the whole thing. This will also need a few different coats. As I said, you will find that some of the clay rehydrates and gets a little hard to cover with the paint, but you just work in layers and you have patience, it is okay. As the first coat dries, I will then move on to my toadstool and I'll use the red. This will also need some coats. The red doesn't cover completely on the first go. That's fine. So I'm just going to smoothly get this on. And I did get some paint from my hands onto the stem of the toadstool. You can paint that white later on and touch that up how you would like. See, now I'm going through and I'm touching up the white spots, places I may have missed with the green paint on both the trinket dish and my little froggy friend.
Next I'm going to go back in with my light green and do a little tiny tummy patch here on the front. You don't have to. You can do polka dots, you can do stripes, you can do whatever you would like or leave it out entirely. I'm just doing a little bit of light green just for some interest. It kind of almost looks like a teddy bear at this point, but it is really cute and I love the way it came out, you'll see. Next, I'm going to do some white with just a little drop of red. We're going to make some pink, and this pink will be the cute little bashful cheeks of the frog. It just makes the little frog that much more endearing and adorable. You can skip this if you want, but you'll see, I think it is worth including. I am going to use the back end of my brush to make the little circles. Sometimes the bristles of the brush splay out too much. You can see I kind of rethink that. So here I am using the back end and it creates a really nice polka dot. So I'm just gonna do a little dot and a little dot at the base of those eye shapes to create cute little rosy cheeks. Then I'm going to clean off my brush and do the same thing with the black right on those eyes to make the eyes. Next, I'm going to clean my brush again and go into the white and make some polka dots on my toadstool. I used the brushes for this because I thought that it made a nice big polka dot. You can use the back end if you would like to. I also touched up some of the red paint and the white on the stem, and I'm waiting for that to dry before I now go in and finish up my polka dots. I want my froggy friend to have an adorable, happy smile, but that was not happening with the paintbrush, so I'm using a permanent marker, and I'm going to just draw the smile on. If you wanna do it with the paintbrush, go for it. It is much easier with a fine-tipped marker, and you'll see that cute smile. So worth it. After setting things aside to dry for another 10 minutes, I heated up a hot glue gun, and then I'm just going to put everything together exactly where I would like it. You can also use a stronger craft glue like an E6000 with adult supervision, and your little trinket dish is ready to go. Enjoy everyone!